Hello, and welcome back to live coverage of the Apex Gaming $20,000 Modern Invitational here at the Apex Gaming Home Store in Caldwell, Ohio. I'm Todd Tandy Anderson, joined by Ross Merriam. Say hi, Ross. Hi, Ross. We have uh, three rounds down. We're entering into round number four of seven. We're bringing you all seven rounds of the Swiss and the three of top eight today, where we're going to crown a champion and give away tons of cash and prizes. Uh, what are we going to be watching for at round number four, Ross? Well... We're getting into the latter half of the Swiss rounds, and that means we've got a lot of great players bumping into each other at the top of the standings. Uh, no exception this round. We're starting with a doozy of a matchup between Will Hall, traveling here all the way from England. Yeah, uh, has, uh, has a friend in tow. Both of them doing quite well. His friend Josh is 2-1. and one. They both LCQ'd in yesterday, and Will's trying to make the most of it with a strong run starting 3-0 today. He's on Boris Energy playing against Ryan Bellamy, the Amulet Titan master. I haven't seen Bellamy lose with Amulet Titan yet. Yeah. He, he, I he won, seen him lose. He won the last two tournaments we watched him play, both on the same weekend, and he's 3-0 today with the same deck. Nobody can stop him. Maybe it'll take somebody from outside the country. <laughs> the Brits come in. We already kicked him out once. We can kick him out again. Yeah, we, had to, <laughs> we had to call in some... Uh, Call in some assistance from across the pond here. Uh, Bellamy, of course, playing his Amulet Titan deck. Uh, these are the two, uh, you know, two of the strongest decks in the format. Uh, we saw this matchup in round one between TJ Radizak and Matt Como. Yeah. TJ on the Amulet side taking that one down. Mm -hmm. uh, so Bellamy hoping he can do the same. Now, I have an update on Will Hall and how this matchup is going to go. Uh, Will cut Blood Moon from his deck, Ross. It's not in his main deck. Oof. Yeah. You That's think he new... might want that against the Amulet <laughs> Titan deck? Maybe? Maybe. We'll see if he can take it anyway. But uh, players are situated and ready to go in the feature match area. So let's head on down for round number four. So without access to Blood Moon, Will is going to be looking for a very fast clock. He wants early Raghavan, wants to curve into more creatures after that, and Static Prison to answer early Amulet of Vigors. If he can do those things, he might be able to steal game one and get to the cyborg games where he has a couple Blood Moons. One game to the good. All right, let's make sure our spotter starts the clock on the screen for the players. Uh, we need those to be matching if we can. All right, turn one here for Bellamy. Going to lead off with Arboreal Grazer. That allows for an Urza Saga as land number two. Yeah, so he still gets to play the Saga on turn one and find Amulet of Vigor as quickly as possible, but now has that early blocker for whatever threat Will plays, which is a Guide of Souls. All right, turn number two for Bellamy. Saga goes up to two. Saga, one of those cards from the Modern Horizon sets that really shook things up when it first came out. Uh, normally people use it to make a bunch of constructs and attack you down and then get Mistress Bobble or something, but this deck uses it as a tutor effect, right? Yeah, they're, they have the fastest or the sagas in the West. Yeah, they don't mind playing them on turn one because Amulet of Vigor at any point is excellent. Yeah. Back to turn one, you, know, you want to play them on turn one. The land from Bellamy is going to be Gruel Turf, picking up uh, the first land played, and we're going to pass it back to Will Hall. Here's Guide of Souls into Amped Raptor. This is going to give us up to three energy here. Unfortunately, no Blood Moons to be hit. But we could hit a Flage here and clear out the Arboreal Grazer. Ooh, Goblin of a Marmot's okay. a pretty good one, but he may not want to cast it, so we can just go ahead and jump the Guide of Souls and get some damage in. Yeah, that is definitely a consideration. Looks like Will's thinking that over. He knows he likely has two more turns before a Primeval Titan. Um, Bellamy could have one of those Lotus Fields to get to six mana next turn, and, or an Explorer, but should have okay. two turns to try to get some damage in. Bellamy gonna go ahead and chump with a with the arboreal grazer. You know what that means. It's time for fireworks, Ross. I don't you know, I don't know exactly what's gonna happen, but I'm telling you, that chump block to me signifies that the game's over. We'll see if it is right now. Bellamy gonna go digging for Amulet of Vigor. Floats some mana off the Urza Saga. Let's see what the land drop is. That's the all important one. If it's Lotus Field, we could be off to the races. All right, just four mana here. Looks like we're going to play the one ring. Okay, so damage prevention, that's why we jump blocked. We're going to go ahead and draw a card off the ring and pass the turn. We are under the ring's protection until the next one. Let's see if Will has one of those static prisons to answer this ring. Otherwise, it'll likely run away with the game, being cast with Bellamy still at his original life total of 20. 
pretty strong start here for Bellamine. And like you said, if that Static Prison doesn't come down here, I have to imagine that the One Ring is just going to take over the game. Todd, your pizza's here. <laughs> pizza delivery! Okay. Will mulling over his turn knows he's pretty behind at this point. Needs to try to find a way to navigate through this ring. Fetching with windswept teeth, we're going to go get a land. Finds second planes. See what he has for three mana. Looks like it's going to be a couple things. Static prison on the ring. Okay, so step one. Shut down the card advantage engine, and now it's up to Bellamy to just draw off the top of the deck to find the kill. And a Johnny, an okay. excellent follow-up. Yeah, great follow-up. Not only puts more pressure on the battlefield, also will net Will another two energy so he can pay for Guide of Souls this turn to apply more pressure and still have an energy left over to pay for the Static Prison on yeah. his following turn. Yeah, I really hope he attacks here, but he doesn't. He could have gotten potentially two triggers off the Guide of Souls over two attack steps, even if he's not dealing damage this turn. And that misstep may cost him. We'll see. Well, if he knows he's not going to get up to enough energy next turn to use the Guide of Souls, then he might want to wait and see what it, you know, see what creature to put the counters on. Bellamy makes five mana and plays another copy of the One Ring. Passes the turn back. Will Hall going to go his way. The Ring protection in effect once again. Static Prison. He lets it go. Keeps all that energy. Makes sense. It is going to let Bellamy draw another card. Yeah, it saves Will some energy at the cost of a card. And at this point, Bellamy has a million cards, so that's not much of a cost to pay for Will. Stuck in a ring loop. All right, Will, thinking about what to do here, but we know that no damage is coming through on the attack step. Plays a Raghavan. We're going to gain a life and an energy. Up to five. Just going to continue building his battlefield here in the hopes that he gets a turn to make a big attack. The ring is so powerful in decks that function uh, as combo decks later in the game. It's so strong in the Grinding Breach deck. It's really strong in this Amulet Titan deck. The protection it grants and the card advantage it grants is just so nuts. Yeah. Strong in the Boros Energy deck, too. Yeah, Strong in every deck. Oh, it's strong in every deck? It's the best card in the format. Every deck wants to play the ring? Weird. Take one from the ring. Ouchers. We're going to draw two cards. See if we can kill. I know we have Amulet of Vigor in play. A bunch of mana in play as well already. Any Titans? Titans, I'm just back. Lumra, Aftermath Analyst. Oh, just flops his hand on the battlefield. Rookie mistake. <laughs> Just flush with resources here. A lot of decision trees to be considered. Many of these lands have five abilities on them or whatever, so you just have to figure out the best sequence before you play anything. We're going to figure go. out the entire turn before you make the first play, so there's going to be a lot of thinking at the start of Bellamy's turns. He'll figure everything out, and then the operation should be pretty quick from there. Well, Bellamy is a very fast player, knows most of the decision trees when it comes to finding the combo kills. So if the game's not over right this moment, then that means the game's not over this turn. Because, or he's trying to figure out the best way to do that. So has another Gruel Turf. Oh, okay. Just another copy of the ring. Yep. Well, another turn where Bellamy will have protection. Yeah. And we find an Amulet of Vigor number two, so we can go ahead and play that if we want to conserve our mana. But it looks like Bellamy going to wait on it. We're going to crack the Aired Mesa from last turn, likely find Elegant Parlor, try to dig for another Static Prison. I believe we have to move to discard. Oh, yeah. Bellamy has drawn a lot of cards, and he hasn't played very many of them. And his lands keep coming back to his hand. All right, so moving to end step. We're going to surveil, keeps the one on top. Might be a bombardment, might be a static prison. Just 
discards Mirror Pool, and is thinking about the others. Yeah, likely just going to juice his graveyard with some lands that he doesn't want to bother playing from his hand. Get yeah. In the graveyard to set up these loops of Lumra and Aftermath Analyst. It also might be intentional, right? To play the bounce line this turn instead of something else. Yeah, and to hold the Amulet of Vigor, just so you can juice his graveyard as much as possible. There are so few turns in a lot of these modern matches that each decision just has significant weight added to it, you know? This card looks like the Urza's Cave. Maybe that's the Echoing Deep. I, always, I get them confused because I haven't seen either of them too much. That looks like the Echoing Deeps. Okay. And uh, it looks like we discarded a Semigrowth Chamber in the Mirror Pool. So we're going to go back to Will Hall. Ring Protection still online. The Echoing Deeps has more purpley art, mm. versus the cave is more green. Got it. That's, that's how we'll keep them separate. I'll try to remember that. Here's the Goblin Bombardment. We can flip the Ajani this turn, but I want to be clear. When the ring protection is online, the Bombardment can't go face, and the Ajani can't go face, which means that uh, you have to target something. And so it's better to just not even flip it till next <laughs> turn. Yeah, so Will continues to set up a big uh, battlefield. He really just needs one attack, I think. All right, well, I see Primeval Titan drawn, and I know we have that second Amulet of Vigor, so I think the game is over. Yeah. Let's the see big, if Ryan can figure it out. The big turn for Will will not arrive. Dude, three rings in a row. Bomp, bomp, bomp. Womp, womp. It's like the old taking turns deck. Bellamy going to start with an Explorer. So now we have two land drops to make now. We're going to use likely the red from the Gruel Turf. And we're going to play Amulet. And then two bounce lands is how much mana? Eight. With yeah. the one floating, that's nine. So this here is Gruel Turf number one to go up to five mana floating. Second land drop because of the Explorer up to nine mana floating. And it should be four red, five green. Explore down to seven. We're going to draw a card and we've got another land drop. And then the bounce lands up to 11. The die I thought was floating mana, but it's tracking still land drops to go. Two explorers. Two explorers. That's good enough. That looks like Urza's Cave. Okay, and with all that mana floating, I guess we can sack it to go get Lotus Field, and then yeah. that allows for infinity with either Lumra or um, Analyst. Yeah. Mirror pools in the graveyard, so likely go for the Lumra. Okay. So here is the Lotus Field, and then that is going to come in and untap twice before it has to sack the two lands. We get to float six mana off of it. And then we sack the Lotus Field and one of the bounce lands, but everything's coming back. Lumer time. Now, Will can break up the Lumer loop with Bombardment. He'd have to sacrifice most of his battlefield. Well, right now, Loomer is only a 1-1. One, one. Let's be clear on sure. that. And so we can sack one creature here and kill it right this moment. Yeah, and then just transform the Ajani that way. Yes. Have it ready for next turn. Okay, we'll take in a Gander at Loomer, so we'll do the same. Let's get Loomer up on the screen. This is a brand new uh, Elemental, I believe it's Elemental Incarnation from Bloomborough. One of the, uh, I guess, like mother creatures in the in the set. It's an elemental bear. Mark. Excuse me. Lumra's a bear. Excuse me. Big old bear. Uh, so Lumra, when it comes into play, uh, allows you to mill four, and then all lands from the graveyard come back uh, from the graveyard to the battlefield. In this deck, with all these lands already in the graveyard from things being sacked with Lotus Field, which is the big key piece, yeah. by the way, uh, we're able to generate absurd amounts of mana through uh, things like Amid of Vigor, and, uh, man, I just yeah. can't imagine the game's going to continue after this. The mill four, I think, was two artifacts and a, and a primeval titan, so no additional lands. I guess we'll only get back seven lands. Yeah. They yeah. do yeah. normally enter the battlefield tap, but with Lumra, or with uh, Amulet of Vigor, they're all getting triggers to untap. So Bellamy just going to go ahead and... Say this is all on the stack. They've all untapped once, and the other untap is on the stack. Yeah, and it, he'll put the bounce triggers from the growth chambers and the sack trigger from the lotus field on the bottom of the stack. 
He'll put all the other triggers at the top of the stack so he can get all his floating mana, make sure the Saga can actually tap for mana, you know, all before he has to make those decisions. I believe he still has a land drop to make, too. So as long as he's got some way to play another one of these big creatures, which he might not have, I guess. Uh, you know, I don't think that the lands that he has in play do a whole lot. Something like Shifting Woodlands could recopy the Lumra, and then the Mirror Pool could recopy that to get the more, more enter the battlefield triggers. Um, Echoing Deep with enough mana can sacrifice to go get a land like the Shifting Woodland to maybe start that chain. But it all depends on how much is floating, and it might be a billion. I don't know. Well, each bounce land is four mana. The Lotus Field is six. That's up to ten. And then all the other lands are at least one. Uh, probably just one, because he wants to use their abilities. So I would imagine there will be 14 mana floating. I guess 15, because the Saga just makes mana. So he'll tap that twice. Okay, so we're oh. floating all this. He counted up all of what he was floating, and now he's going to return two with the Bounce Lands, yeah. and he still has a sack two with the Lotus Field. The Echoing Deeps also might be a second Lotus Field. Deeps can copy a uh, land that is entering with it because it's in the graveyard when you make that decision. It's a really nice pickup on the rules there, Ross. I was not aware of that. The clone effects, when they are entering play, check the correct zone, and things aren't in play until they're in play. Okay, so now Urza's Cave is going to find Shifting Woodland. And that will copy Loomer, which will be quite big. If Will has maybe a, a Galvanic Discharge, can maybe break up Loomer copies. Yeah, he's not going to copy Loomer because it's not entering the battlefield. He just has a Primeval Titan. And this will find a Teleria West and a Bounce Land, and then he can f transmute the Teleria West for a Summoner's Pact, Summoner's Pact for Aftermath Analyst, yeah. and use the Analyst with the Shifting Woodland to start going through his entire deck. Okay, and Bellamy has uh, all of the mana floating written down on his notepad, uh, adept at keeping track of all of this information, even though it's tons and tons of stuff to keep track of. Will doing some bookkeeping himself to make sure he's on track, but I think this game is about wrapped up. Yeah, this is exactly how you draw it up for the Titan deck. If you don't have that really explosive turn two or three kill, just buy time with your copies of the One Ring, draw some extra cards, and set it up a few turns down the road. Yeah, and once again, we're going to see Aftermath Analyst, and Aftermath Analyst plus the Shifting Woodlands and the Lotus Field all together allow you to make infinite mana and infinite land drops. With uh, the Echoing Deep, you can copy cool lands from the graveyard. You can use the Urza's uh, land to go get something from the uh, all your lands from your deck and put them into play. Yeah, so Be Bellamy can start looping the... Uh, once he generates as much mana as he wants and mills his deck, he can start looping any lands he wants and keep reusing them. So you can use Mirror Pool to make as many copies as he wants of whatever creatures he has, namely Primeval Titan, and then use Hanwar Battlements to give them all haste. Okay, so Will, watching as game number one slips out of his grasp, three copies of the One Ring all in a row, followed by just in a very explosive turn... And Bellamy looks like he's about to win game number one. Yeah, it was a it was a turn one arboreal grazer and a turn three ring. So it's turn three ring, turn four ring, turn five ring, turn six kill you. Yeah. On the play, Will really just never had time to even set up any aggression in the face of that draw. He got two turns. <laughs> and his his attack on the second turn was jump blocked by the arboreal grazer. Mm-hmm. I mean, it just shows you the strength of Titan. It can play the short game, it can play the long game. It's not very interactive, but it is very hard to interact with. And now, Shifting Woodland is going to copy the Analyst, and now all these lands come back. And what the really the trick here is that it's Infinity because of Lotus Field. Lotus Field yeah. sacks itself, and it lets you sack another land. And that, in tandem with the Aftermath Analyst, lets you go infinite. And you mill your whole deck, put all your lands into play, one of which can be Kessig Wolfron or whatever, something that gives haste, and then the game ends. Yeah, as, uh, as long as each loop uh, generates enough mana, you're fine here. And now we also get to infinity, infinitely mirror pool our own primeval titan. Yeah. And that's how Bellamy will find the lands he needs to keep going. Doesn't even go get a second land. I'm not sure what he copied there, but I imagine it's just Analyst. Maybe it's Analyst until I have Infinity, and then it's something else. Yeah, just... And we saw the land drop from uh, from earlier. Nice. Yeah. 
And so Bellamy had to be careful there. If you leave yourself without a land drop, just making as much mana as you can in the early part of the sequence, and then you have the Honor Battlements in your hand, he would have had to pass the turn. Yeah, you can also start looping Ottawaras and Besajus. So you end up returning Ottawara alongside Bounce Lands, bouncing the Ottawara to your hand, channeling it, and uh, and then you can keep using the Analyst loop to, to reuse Ottawara like that. All right, uh, can we get Ottawa on screen real quick? I'm pretty sure that can't bounce your own stuff, and I think he announced that he bounces his own one ring. Uh, he I, can? Oh, yeah. Oh, pardon me. Yeah. Bellamy knows what's up. Brazen Bar is the one I guess I'm messing it up with. Okay, so game one goes to Bellamy, and uh, we're going to take a look at these sideboards and see if Will Hall has anything to come in. We know those Blood Moons got to be somewhere. Yeah, he has two copies of Blood Moon in the sideboard, along with two Bone Crusher Giant, two Fear Fire Foes, three Obsidian Charmaw, two Solitude, two Surgical Extraction, and two Thraben Charm. So the Blood Moon's obviously coming in. I think the Solitudes will also come in. That's a nice answer to Primeval Titan, since uh, you don't have to hold up mana for it. I could also see the Bone Crusher Giants coming in as a way to attack through the protection of the ring, which is a problem in game one. Agreed. Fearfire Foes also does that, but it's not nearly as effective of a card outside of that role. Yeah, you normally have to target your own creature, and it does deal one damage to all your other creatures when you do that, so I don't think that that one's coming in, but Bone Crusher is certainly great. Yeah, so Blood Moon, Bone Crusher Giant, Solitude. Okay. On the other side of the table, uh, Bellamy up a game with Amulet. How is he going to approach this uh, Boros Energy matchup? His sideboard is a lot more diverse. There's one Aether Spellbomb, one Bajuka Bog, one Poseju who endures supplementing two in the main, one Colossal Sky Turtle, one Defense Grid, one Dismember, one Endurance, two Fire Spout, two Force of Vigor, one Hydroid Crisis, one Mystical Dispute, one Radiant Fountain, and one Vexing Bauble. He will certainly be bringing in the Fire Spouts, he will bring in the Radiant Fountain, and then he has to bring in, uh, and the Dismember, so Creature Removal, then he has to bring in some number of answers to Blood Moon. Force of Vigor is nice because even if you don't have a green source, you can cast it with the alternate cost. Uh, Beseju is nice since it's a land and comes at a low opportunity cost. And you could potentially also bring in Sky Turtle and maybe be able to... Oh, no, it only bounces creatures. Okay, so no Sky Turtle, but has three different disenchant effects on the sideboard and two Besejus in the main. That should be enough. Okay. As these players are shuffling up here and... Uh, getting ready to do mulligans for game number two. I'd like to take this time to say thank you to the sponsors for this weekend's festivities here at ApexCon. Uh, we are sponsored by Ghost Energy. Ghost Energy keeps us hydrated and energized on these long tournament weekends. We're also sponsored by SpiceRack.gg. SpiceRack.gg is a perfect place to go if you are looking to run tournaments yourself or uh, find a tournament being run near you. We're sponsored by Ultimate Guard, the industry leader when it comes to TCG supplies. From the archive deck box to the katana sleeves, check your local game store for Ultimate Guard products today. And last but not least, thanks to Wings Etc. Grill and Pub. I got sports on TV, cauliflower wings in my belly. Can't wait. All right, Ross, who you got winning game number two? Is the play for Will Hall a big deal? Well, we haven't seen Ryan Bellamy lose in months months so i said game two i'm done i'm done betting against him in any way okay on the draw sure i don't care he'll probably just win on turn two i'll just cast ring on three every time yeah ring three ring four ring five kill you on six. Oh no i'll cast my ring when i'm at 16 instead of 20 <laughs> I, I do really like this amulet titan deck the the robustness of the aftermath analyst and lumer loops is uh incredible the explosiveness of the lotus field uh, really brought this deck to another level, I think. Okay, Bellamy. Taking a peek at the opener here. Will Hall going to be on the play? And we're off. Aired Mesa, Raghavan. A great one-drop here for Will. See That's... if Bellamy has the check like last game with Arboreal Grazer. No, just Urza Saga. Turn two Blood Moon on the table. Turn two Blood Moon's game over, probably. Yeah, turn two Blood Moon would, yeah, certainly end this game. The Raghavan is the ideal one drop, so it's looking a lot better for Will Hall here in game two.
All right, Will draws. Let's we'll see if he has it. Rogvin gets in there. Two damage and treasure. The more important part. Ooh, the that's a big land. hit. That's a huge hit. No more hand war battlements for Ryan Bellamy, so no haste on those primeval titans and Lumra. We get the treasure token. Let's see if we have land number two. So that won't necessarily... It stops the combo from winning immediately, but with the Ottawara loops and Besaju loops, Bellamy will still be able to take over. He just needs to be careful of not putting himself in a situation where he dies to his own one ring. Uh, Do you see what I'm seeing, Ross? Do you see the triple Ocelot Pride on turn two? Yeah. There's going to be a lot of tokens, buddy. <laughs> so a lot of tokens. We'll up to six permanents with that triple Ocelot Pride. This is going to be an attack for five. We'll, we'll gain three up to 20. He might play that Arboreal Grazer just to get to the city's blessing. Yeah. The treasure from Rogovin will represent a seventh permanent. Do need to put the treasure into play. And now, seven permanents. If we pass the turn, we'll hit City's Blessing and make one token, two tokens, three, six tokens, plus an extra treasure. Yeah. But we're going to do even more than that. Here's a Johnny. So now he's up to nine permanents, which means all three will double. So you'll get two tokens off the first trigger, then up to six tokens total after the second trigger, and then you'll go up to seven, copy them. So this should be 14 cat tokens. Is that a lot? Okay. Oh, and, and they all make two ones. Because the two one cap from the Ajani also came in. So this should be 14 one ones and three two ones. Okay. Just a massive amount of pressure, but Bellamy is not out of it yet. And I know that sounds kooky, but this Amulet Titan deck can just go berserk and go infinity. Infinity is the groundbreaker. But, but, but without the Hanware Battlements, this deck isn't quite as explosive. Right, I but once you gonna... reach Infinity, we've already talked about, you can bounce the whole board, besage you all the yeah. lands. But sometimes to get there, you need to double trigger your um, your Primeval Titan. Are we supposed to have eight treasures? That can't be right. Whatever. All right, chapter oh, three. Oh, yeah, because it, the, yeah, it's... Because you, you basically double it each oh time. Oh my goodness. Two of the three is eight. So yeah, it, it's not linear. It's exponential. So yeah, he's now no. also at eight treasures and eight two ones. No. That's <laughs> wild. Yeah. So this is uh, going to be an attack next turn for 19, 20, 32. Okay. Bellamy is copying Sorry, Sacred 36. Foundry. Three mana. That's Fire Spout. Guess what? It's zero creatures <laughs> left after that. Will can transform a Johnny right here if he has something like a, a Lightning Bolt or something uh, to kill his own creature. But other than that, Fire Spout is the clear. This is a three-mana sweeper. Kills Flyers, kills non-Flyers, lets you pick and choose. And it's something that Bellamy has been playing uh, for quite some time now, and it's been a nice addition to the sideboard of these Amulet Titan decks. And for Will Hall, such an explosive start. Turn three, make 55 creatures. Not good enough, and it's not even at the cost of an Amulet Titan kill, just a three-mana spell. Yeah, that Fire Spout killed 27 creatures. Is that good? or At least we have 10 mana. <laughs> Who's the ramp deck now? I mean, if, if, if Will has a ring in hand, he can rebuild pretty quickly. True. True, true, true. Originally from Shadowmoor, Fire Spout. All right, Will, what do you got? We're going to tap two, three. There's Bloodman. Okay. The game's not over. Eight mana, or seven mana still, and nothing to do with it. What are his last two cards? Static Prisons? Yeah, got to be removal spells. Lotus Field Pass. I, I wonder if Will had the Blood Moon last turn, but wanted to go for that explosive start. And in doing so, he allowed Bellamy to get an amulet onto the battlefield. So if that's the case, he could be regretting that sequence. Hard to resist making 87 power on turn three. <laughs> Pretty good. Okay, just mountains for both players. A Johnny found, or Will, does have that one plane so he can cast it. And uh, we're going to pass back here in just a sec. Okay, so Bellamy needs to find some forests. Notably, he does not have the generous ent that most of these lists have in the sideboard, so a little bit less prepared for Blood Moon that way. Likely, we'll just need to find 
one of the disenchants, either Forest plus Besaidu to channel it, or uh, a Force of Vigor. All right, we're gonna go ahead and play three mana. This is Flage, gonna deal three to you, and with these treasures that uh, were created earlier, we can flash it back from the graveyard and put it right into play. And that's what we're gonna do. And that likely ends this game unless Bellamy has Besaidu in hand and draws Forest, because if he draws Force of Vigor, he needs to wait a turn. So you have to cast it yes. for free on your opponent's turn, and for he doesn't have that turn to spare. So I, I think it needs to be Forest right now with Besaidu in hand, followed up by a combo kill. All right, well, a really sick clear on that fire spot early, but it's all been, it's been all Blood Moon and Will Hall since then, and Bellamy packs it in. Game number two goes to Will Hall, and we're going to a rubber game. Yeah. Blood Moon hard carrying against the Amulet Titan. What else is new? Yeah. Really cool looking Blood Moon too. I remember you and I were in the booth the first time I ever saw that, and I just <laughs> lost my mind. But when you see the full art of it, when you see it up close, it looks really sweet. Yeah. The only way I knew it was a Blood Moon the first time was the the place on the battlefield the the player put it. <laughs> I was that had to have been an enchantment, and that's the only enchantment they could play. All right. While these players are shuffling up here for game number three, I'd like to thank the good folks at Apex Gaming. Ross, Miriam, and I we don't live here. We don't play here at our as our local game store. We are invited here by the Huck Brothers, Kyle and Taryn, and they treat us like family, and we really appreciate them, and we really appreciate the community that we're able to build here because of them at Apex Gaming in Caldwell, Ohio. If you are looking to play some competitive magic and make a name for yourself, there are very few places in the United States better than here in Caldwell, Ohio on the Apex series. Yeah, we'll be back here next year for Season 5. Yeah. But right now we have a Season 4, the 2024 champion to crown. We are in round number 4. Ryan Bellamy, a double open winner from our last event. Won both of them, one team, one solo. Playing against Britt, Will Hall, who qualified yesterday, grind, grinded in and uh, finally got the dub. Did the same thing last year, but failed to make it. Went 4-1 twice and bubbled both times. This time, though, bubbled the first one, won the second one, and now he's 3-0. Playing around four against a very strong player in Bellamy. Yeah, and he's going to be on the draw here for game three. Looks like uh, our players have stopped. Is, is Ryan just presented his deck and he's waiting for Will? Yeah, I think Will's considering one sideboard card or two. And they they while the games can take a little long, I don't think that the winner will not be found. Uh, the way that the games work, it's rarely grindy. Yeah. There's just one very long turn from Ryan. They have 20 minutes on the clock. They have plenty of time. Yeah. All right, so we'll finalizing those last few slots. We'll be ready in just a minute. If you haven't checked it out already, the Will Hall Experience is a stream that Will runs, and uh, it is... Old coverage. It's really sweet. It's like a really good background thing to put on. Old Magic Grand Prix and Pro Tours. You get to watch old players do what old players do, and that's kick butt. Sling spells. Yeah. Okay. Will, I think, is done making his sideboard adjustments. Now it's time to shuffle up and play. Okay. Let's see if players are going to keep their openers or if either wants to take a mulligan. Other than Blood Moon, what are some uh, potential tools that Will Hall might really want to see in its opener? Ragavan Static Prison. Ragavan is the best card at applying pressure. Static Prison answers the early Amulet of Vigors or later Rings. That's his best uh, form of interaction other than the Moon. Okay. Bellamy going to be on the play. If we keep seven, you have to imagine that's bad news for Will. Yeah. The ideal hand for Will is something like Three Lands, Ragavan, Blood Moon, Static Prison, and another creature, Amp Raptor or Ajani. Well, I saw Amulet Vigor on Bellamy. I have to imagine that that with some lands might be good enough. Yeah. <laughs> Bellamy's hoping for two amulets, an Urza Saga, and uh, you know, a Lotus Field and a Primeval Titan. Just kill on turn two. Now, Will, going to throw back that seven. Could be because of uh, some malfunction, but also, in modern, the decks are so powerful and potent, that you can mulligan to 6 or 5 pretty aggressively looking for really specific stuff, especially in matchups like Amulet Titan that aren't pressuring your resources at all. Yeah, this is a very much a matchup that's about speed, because the Amulet Titan deck is going to win the long game, so Will can afford to mulligan aggressively. Okay, 6 card coming. See which one he wants to put back. Will Hall coming across the pond here to play in our event. 
with his uh, friend Josh Richardson, Richardson, who was uh, at least 2-0 to start the event, may maybe 3-0, doing very well. He is 2-2, uh, unfortunately, had a rough oh. couple rounds. Darn. Well, we're underway here. Bellamy leads with Microsynth Gardens into Amulet of Vigor. That's two amulets right off the rip. Yeah, he's set up for a turn three kill if there's no Blood Moon coming. Will Hall going to quickly fetch with Aired Mesa and deploys Raghavan, getting some pressure down, threatening some treasures. Had that Raghavan do some serious dirty work last game. And now Bellamy has to be wary of the potential for turn two Blood Moon. <clears throat> okay, now we have two copies of Amulet of Vigor. Oh, yes, Blocks Diamond. So, plays Gruel Turf, makes red green, uses the red to oh activate my God. gardens. Keep going. Then, Arboreal Grazer with the green. Now huh. you get four mana, plus explored net two mana total, because he replayed the uh, Gruel Turf for four mana with double amulet, and that's enough for Primeval Titan. Is this a turn two? I think this might be the fabled turn two kill, because we have Mirror Pool plus... Lotus Field, and then the Mirror Pool can copy the Primeval Titan. Once we do that, we get more mana, and then more mana. Holy smokes. Yeah. So Mirror Pool makes colorless when it untaps, and then you use that colorless to activate it with the mana from the One Ring, or from the Lotus Field, sorry. Yeah. So there's a second Primeval Titan. Now that Lotus Field will get sacked at some point, but right now, uh, the trigger is still just on the stack. And so... Now we get Echoing Deeps and another Lotus Field. Echoing Deeps will copy the Mirror Pool that's now in the graveyard and make another Primeval Titan. Yep, and we're floating tons of mana while we're doing this thanks to the double Amulet of Vigor. Yeah, Bellamy essentially gets seven mana, two untaps on Lotus Field, one untap on the Mirror Pools for a Colorless, uses the Colorless and four others to activate the Mirror Pool, so he has two floating each iteration. And so now he can afford to get Simic Growth, Simic Growth Chamber and Clark Clary West. West. Yeah, and once you do that, you can go get Aftermath Analyst, and then I can chain some stuff together. Maybe it's not quite enough. Maybe it's just a bunch of Titans. But well, maybe a bunch of Titans is good enough. He, the one thing he has to be careful about is making sure he has either shifting... I guess, no, because he has the Mirror Pool, so that should be good enough with the Lumra. Commercial District... Grabbing that maybe to get an extra surveil. Is this Hammer Battlements? Okay. Okay. And so now we get two hasties, right? And then we have to sack four lands, so they'll all go to the graveyard. But then we attack with the Titan. We get four uh, four lands out of the deck. Yeah. That's a ton of mana during the middle of the combat. Still need to resolve these Lotus Field triggers. All four lands <laughs> should be dead. And now we're going to go get four lands from the deck. No more mana floating here, though. We're going to go to five life. I want to be clear, too. These Mirror Pools, these are permanent. These aren't temporary tokens. This is still 18 power. And Boros is, like, not equipped to deal with this. And no Summoner's Pact have been cast yet. Yeah, I, I don't think Bellamy's actually going to go full loop now because he's already attacked. So I think this is just about set up some answers for whatever Will might have, and I'm not even sure what that is. Mm -hmm. He can just easily win the game next turn with the three Primeval Titans. Will is going to start stacking dice for funsies. <laughs> See how big he can make the stack before Bellamy's done. I wish he had started this way earlier. This would I think be more fun. This is number five? I believe so. Okay. Well, uh, uh, he was doing them in num numerical order. There's seven. Seven wow. die tower. That's pretty impressive. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> he just flops them all on the ground. Okay, take 12 and pass the turn. Your go. Yeah, no need to make this game Declaration more Declaration of Stone? Declaration of Stone? <laughs> Anything? Bueller we'll has some solitudes. <laughs> Planes. Guide of Souls. And Ocelot Pride. So, not nearly enough to defend yeah. against three 6-6 six, six Tramplers. That's going to be the game and match for Ryan Bellamy moving to 4-0. Oh. and In one more round, he could punch his ticket to the top eight of the Invitational here and win his fair share of $20,000. Multiple and continents of players, and we still haven't seen someone able to take this kid out. It's a good deck. It's a good player. All the lines, he knows them already. It's scripted. It's yeah. like watching a machine work. He, he tricked us. The Mycosynth Gardens into Amulet turn one play. Looks like you're setting up for a turn three, three kill, kill, but he had the turn two because of the power of Explore and Arboreal Grazer. 
Yeah, this time it was just the one explorer, though. 